There's resurrection life in the name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 2, and you will read it on your time, verses 5 through 11, encourages us with those words that every other name, this means a power above every other name. Hallelujah. Every other power. He gives us power, the Bible says, to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions. And over all, all, all the power of the devil. And when we know this power, people of God, it will make us to exercise our rightful authority over the powers of darkness and we will not be afraid of them. Do you know that God has given us that exousia power? That power that that transcends over jurisdictions? It's the power that power, like the FBI has, was higher. But I'm making a comparison right here. You can go from any state to state and you're not restricted because you have that mandate. You have that power. So wherever you show up, you are recognized, accepted, and you have carte blanche. That's the power that we have and more. Are we tapping into it? Are we using that power to call things into being? Are we using that name and that power to speak over our lives, to speak to the virus, to speak to any situation that comes our way to depress us? Are we using that name, that power, that blood of Jesus to not be afraid, to stand confident and sure, knowing that God is true to his word and he's, that he's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. In Romans chapter 8, verse 11, it endorses the power of his resurrection. And this is what it says. If the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you, like he raised up Christ from the dead, shall also quicken, quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Is the spirit of God dwelling in you? If you don't know the Lord, then this conversation is not going to affect you right now. This is for somebody who is saying, Lord, I know of you, but I don't know you in your resurrection power. I want to know you, Jesus. I want to know you. I want to have a relationship with you. So in the sound of my voice this afternoon, this morning, if you do not know him, does not just mean to turn away from sin. It also means turning to Jesus. When we repent, we turn away from sin, but we've got to turn to Jesus, not to man, not to woman, but to Jesus who's the author and finish of our faith. It also means turning to Jesus. Forgiveness means that God will not hold the judgment against us for our sin because Jesus has been judged in our place. That's what the cross was all about. That's what the week of, of, of him going down to the to the trial and everything. He has been judged in our place. If he has not been resurrected from the dead, then he has no power today. If he was not resurrected, no power. And that I death, that I resurrection,
to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The sound of my voice, if you don't know him as Lord and Savior, I want you to accept him. Just by saying, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I believe you died for me and you rose again from the dead. I want to be a part of your family. I want to come into your genealogy. I want to be a part of the kingdom of God. For those of us who are a part of the kingdom of God, I want us to band together, hold the faith, pray it one for the other, support the work of the Lord, bear one another's burden, and win souls for Christ. Because only the things that we do for Christ will happen. Only the things that we do for Christ will end. The Lord say right now, that there are few people on the line. You're scared. And you're scared because you don't know what the word of God says concerning your life. Resurrection has purpose and power. It's that allow you to accept him as Lord and Savior, which is salvation. Resurrection gives you that power, exousia power, dunamis power, the power to take jurisdiction and to take authority on things on the earth, above the earth, and beneath the earth. Greater is he that's within you than he that's in the world. Your prayer must be so potent, so dangerous, that it should cancel and nullify the virus, the radiation, whatever it is that's creating destruction to your life. Tomorrow, I'm speaking to somebody who has been procrastinating. Surrender today. It requires nothing but being faithful to God, following his word, being obedient to the word of God. You don't have to pay for it. It's free. Why not try him? Why not try him? He's not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. Allow him to come in. And sup with you. He's standing there with his arms wide open. Waiting on you. To come into the family. The Bible says when one person accepts him. There's a big party. There's a big throw down in heaven. The angels rejoice because we understand that we're depopulated the kingdom of darkness. And the kingdom of darkness is not going to be pleased. So you'll get attacks from east, west, north, and south. But when you stand on that solid rock, and when you stand on the promises of God, you will surely stand. You will be steadfast and immovable. Always is abounding. You will be like that tree that's planted by the rivers of water that will bring forth fruit in due season. Because he reminds us that by our fruit, we shall know him. Not by us walking with our Bibles. Not by us wearing the t-shirts or the caps. Not by us with the bumper stickers. But by our fruit. How are we responding when we're outside a church building? How are we responding when no one is seeing us, when we're in our homes? How are we responding to our co-workers, our family members? Is the love of God, the agape love permeating in our lives? Resurrection did that for us. He says, I'm with you always. I've never left you nor forsake you. We sing that song, even when I don't see it, he's working. Even when I don't feel it, he's working. He never stops. He said that. I do not slumber nor sleep. Behold, he that keepeth Israel neither slumber nor sleep. He hasn't forgotten you. Cry out to him. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you shall be saved. That's the name above every other name. Do not leave this today without making sure that you say, God... I surrender all for you, withholding nothing. And for those of you who know the Lord, and you've turned away, and you've walked away, or you've compromised your walk, or you've not been diligent, or you've not been 
effective in doing the master's will, today I want you to ask for forgiveness. It's resurrection time. It's healing time. It's deliverance time. It's time to take back that power and that authority that he suffered for so that we can have it and have that life more abundantly. God bless you, people of God. Stay connected. Stay in prayer. Stay on your knees. Stay in his presence. Be still and wait to hear from him because he is God.